Kim and Brighton. I want to thank you as one of the national coordinators of this walk. I'd like to personally thank each and every one of you people that started with us when we left Sacramento, California, February the 11th. There are 28 of you out there, and when we get back to San Francisco, we've got a plaque waiting for you with your name on it. Well, I want to personally thank you and each and every one of you that joined us along the way, because you've just completed one of the most courageous walks in the history of this country, 3,000 miles, in which you walk through blizzards, tornadoes, you walk through some states where they wouldn't let us walk on their freeways. You walk through some states where they wouldn't let us walk on their bridges. And when we went through Nevada, they wouldn't let us walk through the main streets of Reno, Nevada, and we had to take the outskirts. We walked through some states where they treated us with in complete disrespect. But nevertheless, we made it. And a lot of people said we never would make it. And officials of the Bureau of Indian Affairs bet we wouldn't make it, but we made it because we possessed something that they didn't count on. You know, when we left, we left with very little money, very little food, very few support vehicles. And a lot of people said they'll never make it out of Nevada if they reach that far. And we ran into, and we ran into a blizzard in going over the Sierra Mountains that first night. In the winter, the weather dropped below 20 below zero. But we made it because we organized a long run and we ran 50 miles through a blizzard in 22 degrees below uh, zero weather. We ran through other obstacles, but we did make it. And it's interesting, when you see the people here, when they lined the streets when we came into this city, in that area, thousands of white people cheering us on. The attitude had changed completely. It almost seemed as though they were rooting for us. And I'm sure that some of them were. You know, America has become great and they've become powerful and the richest, strongest country in the world since mankind began. And America came and became great by walking over the paths of American Indians and other minorities and poor whites. You might say that the 20th century, the path to the 20th century have been over the graves of American Indians, our forefathers. What people haven't brought out in this walk is and this talk since we've been up here is the major reason the federal government wants our land and why they've introduced 11 pieces of legislation to take it. And that's because of the natural resources on our land. The fact that we, American Indians, own 55% of the uranium left in the United States, and the fact that we own 30% of the unused coal left in the United States, and the fact that we own uh, an undisclosed amount of oil on our Indian reservations, and that's not counting the gas and the timber and the water they're trying to get. But there's one other thing that I want to bring out that hasn't been brought out, and that's the fact that we won't have any need for reservations if we don't stop the sterilization of our youth and of our women and our men. The federal government, through the Bureau of the Indian Health Service and HEW, have sterilized 300,000 Indian women in the last 20 years. In 1977, Senator Averas came out with a report that the federal government had sterilized 3,406 Indian women and 142 men in a three-year period from 1973 to 1976 in only four states. There are 18 states that have a population of 10,000 Indians or more. And if you take those same 10 states or 18 states over that same three-year period from 73 to 76, you're going to come up with a figure like 15,000 women were sterilized in that three-year period. We talked to a woman who was sterilized 20 years ago when she went in to have a baby. And after delivering her baby, they sterilized her and didn't bother to tell her. So we know they've been sterilizing Indian women for 20 years or more. And we've come up with a figure that they've sterilized a minimum of 300,000 Indian women in the last 20 years, which is criminal genocide. They've, they perform most of this sterilization against the will of Indian people. Many of these women who've had children on reservations couldn't read or write. And they came to them and asked them to sign consent forms, which are written in English. They knew this, and they're supposed to wait 72 hours, but they didn't, and they don't. And they've sterilized all of our women by trickery, by fraud, and by crook. They asked them to sign consent forms they couldn't read in English. They've sterilized them without telling them about it. And they've sterilized them by lying to them and telling them the operation was reversible. 
We talked to one young Cree girl from North Dakota, and she told us that around 90% of the teenage girls in the Cree reservation have been sterilized. This is criminal negligence and criminal genocide. And if this doesn't stop, there will be no need for having reservations. We're going to ask for the criminal prosecution of the head of the Indian Health Service, the area directors, and all of those butchers who carried this through. We're going to file the most mammoth lawsuit against the his this country that uh, the Indian Health Service has ever been filed, a class action suit asking for $300 million, which won't bring back the fertility of these women, but we can use it to try to re erect some of the operations that have been caused. This is something that hasn't been mentioned, and it has to be one of the major platforms we introduce in our manifesto, because we can't go on and letting them butcher our women and our men. This is, this walk, I'm extremely proud to be part of it. And it reminds me of something in talking about one of our great Indian leaders of the past, we as a Sioux, we had a great Indian leader by the name of Crazy Horse. And when he would go into battle and trying to brave up his men when he was always hopelessly outnumbered, he would tell them, Hokahe, let's go. Today's a good day to die. Well, hook it, hey, let's go. Today's a damn good day to fight them on this legislation. Oh. <laughs>